Hey guys, today I'm going to take you through how to assemble your LS engine and just give you all a rough idea of the steps involved and some of the torque specs as well as a bunch of part numbers I used that were hard to find. So you want to start by installing the main bearings into the bearing caps. You can see they have a top and bottom orientation and top actually refers to the cylinder head side of the engine so don't mess that up. Next you want to go ahead and install the main caps. Then torque the mains to 15 foot-pounds in sequence. After this you'll add 80 and 53 degrees respectively to the inner and outer bolts. Then I installed my Melling engine block plug set. So after file fitting the rings to 26 thou and 26 thou, I installed new C-clips, then installed the pistons into the engine. After I torqued the rods down, I installed the cam. I used an extension in the end of the cam for extra support. Uh, I've got an LS9 cam going into this. Then I installed new cam thrust plate. Make sure you get a new one. There's a little o-ring behind it that has to seal. And I also put a retrofit timing chain damper on there. And this is to prevent timing chain slap, which actually breaks a lot of engines. Next I installed the oil pump. Make sure you're using the correct o-ring here on the pickup tube because a lot of engines will get low oil pressure because of a bad o-ring. One more thing you can do to prevent low oil pressure is this Wicked Sac City Corvette oil tube pickup. So you can see the stock uh, unit there only has one bolt that holds in this o-ring and if you look up on Alice One Tech or something you'll see how many people have blown their engines up because this o-ring wasn't seated properly. So this little, this little um, kind of a spacer and extra bolt here just helps seat the pickup tube down better and can pretty much guarantee that you're not going to blow up your engine due to the wrong o-ring. Next I install the lifters into the new trays, four at a time. These are LS7 lifters and trays, they're just an upgrade design, just about everybody runs these. Next here you can see I'm installing my new valve springs. I just went for some Summit double springs, they're 140 pounds on the seat. Uh, I chose a double over singles. I was going to get pack 1218s, but I decided that a double, if one spring breaks, I'm not going to lose my engine as likely as with a single. So after I'm done, I just tap each valve with a rubber mallet. Next, I install new dowels and the LS9 head gaskets, making sure the front orientation is actually pointing towards the front of the engine. Then I torque them down. I've got ARP head bolts in this.
Next, I installed the valley cover. I opted for the billet valley cover because it looked kind of cool and it was dirt cheap. Then I installed the front cover and I'm using this Sac City Corvette alignment tool. Now what this tool does is it allows you to perfectly center your front cover on the crank and the factory GM tool is actually about 300 bucks to do this. A lot of people neglect this step and they end up with a front seal that leaks. So this tool is simple to use. You simply put the tool in with all of the bolts in the cover hand tight. Then with the oil pan installed, you'll adjust the torque on the oil pan bolts at the bottom until this tool kind of spins nice and freely. Once it does, you can just torque up all your cover bolts and you're done. Pull the tool out and you're not going to have a leaking seal. I installed the rear cover a similar way. Unfortunately, I couldn't get this dowel out of my crank and I was kind of scrambling to get the engine in because we don't get any nice weather in BC. So I had to sabotage the tool a little bit. I'm sorry, Christian, but it did still work good as it was. You see that nasty hole I put in it. So there's big things to come here. Uh, the engine build here, I know this isn't the most interesting thing in the world, but I hope this is a good reference for all you guys when you're building. Uh, you can see here I got my engine all mocked up on the stand and there are some exciting things to come. My dyno date is set at May 3rd, so I better start getting something done here. Thanks for checking it out, guys. We'll see you soon.